Hey, shalom, me shalom, when the stuff souls but give no praise, Tia Bashem, Yasha, Bashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles of GMS and honesty brothers doing the work in truth, was well, sincerity. This one is a, um, it's a video uh, on, on, on this uh, article that's uh, breaking news, 22nd April, 1518, so that was uh, just over an hour ago, assuming that's GMT time. Uh, yeah, it says there is a pr- price to be paid for threatening Israel. The defense minister warns as Iran warns Iran as tensions flare. Right, so we know there's going to be a conflict. Um, you know, in these last days, we know that something's going to happen. You know, that's basically going to drag the world into you know into 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 World War Three. Right, so you know this comes at the back of um. Ron basically saying, yo, you know, why are you, why are you hitting our, what do you call it, uh, our air base? So it's just tensions between Iran and Israel flared following an airstrike on Syria's T-4 air base in Homs province, April 8. Iran and the Russian military accused Israel of being behind the attack, um, which, according to Iranian news agencies, claimed the lives of seven of its military personnel. Uh, and I mean, here's the hypocrisy, you know, because it says the attack was a blatant violation of international law, right? You know, because it only seems like uh, other people, other people in the world have to um, follow these rules and laws that are set up by these governments, you know, by these or this and the other. Whereas, you know, they can just break those laws themselves, right? They'll be like, oh, it's, it's, you know, oh, you can't use it as against international law. And then they'll go around and break international law, right? Um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, it goes and says here we um in line with Israel's narrative that Iran is trying to establish a serious military presence in Syria, the Israeli defense minister said that we will not allow for Syria to become a military base for Iran. Right? So you can really see, you know, there's there's something going on there. But that's exactly what you know prophecy says is Jeremiah forty nine twenty. Right, it says therefore hear the counsel of Yahweh that he taketh against Edom, and his purpose, that he hath purpose against the inhabitants of Teman, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, right, and that least of the flock is talking about Israel, right, and they're going to do something stupid, like I said, you know, rather as the scriptures said, prophecy said, and the apostles have broken down, um, you know, their elders and they themselves, right, that's going to lead this world into, um, you know, a, a, a bigger conflict and ultimately our salvation, right? This is Joel 3 and 9 from the Tons. Let's proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up, right? It says, uh, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. And you've seen both those two things happen. You've seen major nations uh, funnel money away from agriculture into, uh, would you call it, into army, uh, so into building up their army presence, right? Which is what this represents: plowshares and pruning hooks, right? Being like agriculture instruments to swords and spears, which are army instruments, right? It says, "Let the weak say, I am strong." Right? You've seen your small nations become big nations, right? In terms of um, uh, military power. When it says, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. All right? It says, let, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Yahweh part the valley of the Most High's judgment. All right? Which is over there, you know, in the Middle East. All right? It says, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in a sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Right, multitudes, multitudes, so a lot of people, right, in the valley of decision, for the day of your hour is near in the valley of decision. Right, so basically it's going to be a war, and a lot of people are going to be, um, what do you call it, are, are, are going to be, you know, going to be put to death, a lot, a lot of men. Right, let um, me see, get this real quick. I must get Isaiah 47, I'm going to start from verse 7, it says, And thou sayest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst thou remember the latter end, for, end of it. And I said, Therefore hear now this, thou art that given to pleasure, pleasures that dwellest carelessly, that sayest 
in thine heart I am and none else beside me I shall not sit as a widow neither shall I know the children at uh, the loss of children it's talking about you know that land then you know but you could sit at the top uh, come down and sit in the dance of virgin door of Babylon virgin door of Babylon you know um, basically America untouched you know, because they've not had any uh, military and nothing's really happened to America you have Pearl Harbor but that was an inside job not inside jobs, so like you know, they knew that was going to happen. Or right, you had um, what you call it, nine eleven. That was an inside job. So really, America's not really been touched, right? In terms of a war, which is why you know people just you know people's here in London as well. It's like ah oh, yeah, whatever you know, it's Syria. Oh, it's all the way over there though, right? But what's going to happen is you know the war. They're going to start really feeling the effects of the war, right? As it says here. Uh, goes on saying verse nine, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abom abundance of thine enchantments, right? So the, you know, the, a lot of these men are going to go to war and they're not going to come back, right? So they're going to know widowhood, they're going to know the loss of children, right? And you also have that in... um. Uh, what do you call it? There's a bride, groom shall mourn. And was it second Ezra? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, the virgins. Yeah, that's the one. It says second Ezra sixteen thirty three. Right, it says the virgins shall mourn having no bridegrooms, and the women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. In the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. Right. So, you know, all of these guys, a lot of death has come upon the earth, right? You know, we know that it's going to have something to do with Israel and Iran. And, y you know, that's going to really be the catalyst, um, you know, to World War Three heating up. Because to be, to be truth, we, we've already started. World War Three has already begun, right? You know, World War Three has already begun. It's just, you know, what happened in Syria last month, April, well, not last month, but this month in April, about how, you know, you had the US, UK and France shooting missiles over there. That was the first time this, you know, this proxy war has come really into, you know, in the, you know, between, start to become a less of a proxy war, more of an actual war, right? Because right now, Syria is just a battleground, a proxy battleground for Russia and America, right? You know, you had that Russian ambassador, to uh, Jordan or one of those countries saying that they'd basically shoot down whoever shot at um, Syria but then that never materialized and they were talking big but uh, you, 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 you know hey one of these days Lord's will man Lord's will soon you know one of these days one of these weeks one of these months all right the Lord's gonna make this military conflict into something bigger all right, it's Ezekiel 38 from the top says, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the print, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Right? That's talking about what is uh, modern day Russia today. Right? It says, um, I was talking about the Russians. It says, And say, Thus saith the Lord, Power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Uh, because ultimately, you know, they're Edomites themselves. The Lord, Lord ain't down with, you know, Edomites, he's down with Israel. Right? And all of this is to, you know, bring about, uh, what you call it, judgment so that, you know, the, child, the, the the kingdom of Israel can be established. It says, And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed, all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia. Ethiopia, right, and Persia is, um, which you call it, Iran, right, like I said, so Iran's going to have something to do with this, right, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with, uh, with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomach, Turkey, and all his bands, house of Togoma of the north quarters, and all his band, and many people with thee, it says, be thou, be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou guard unto them, Right, so that's why you're seeing Russia give Syria S four hundreds. Right, that's why you're seeing these certain military alliances taking place before our very eyes. Right, because you know the, the Lord is determined to basically bring about this war. 
Right. But um, yeah, it's just supposed to be a quick one. So until the next time, I'm going to say shalom.